Right, we've just pulled up at Glindbourne, um, which is actually an opera venue near us. Um, because it's sort of fitting to what this car is going to be doing, going around an estate in Kent, actually. So the next county over to us, um, just south of London, this car will actually end up. And that's nice because it's going to be going in and out of London um, because the owner's mum lives about 40 miles into London. Um, so it'll be able to go there and obviously be emission zone free, free um, ULES free, tax free, etc. Um, so let's have a look at what we've done. Um, so, as you can see, really nice looking battery box there. Um, that has got seven Tesla Model S batteries in it, um, but not any old Tesla Model S batteries. They're actually the 6.4 kilowatt option, which they basically only put in the big Model Xs and the big Model Ss, like the P100Ds, for example. Um, so that means we've got 44 kilowatts in here, all under the bonnet with a Hyper 9 beneath them. So we're pretty happy with that. It was very, very close in the clearances, but we managed to get it in. Um, so. That's good for, let's call it 110, 120 miles of range. Um, and then of course you can just plug it in at any old charge point and plug and charge her up again. Um, whether that be at home on your three pin socket or a, you know, a pod point kind of thing there. Um, so in the, in, the, in the engine bay is absolutely everything. We haven't gone behind the bulkhead on this car in terms of the conversion. That makes it easy for us. It makes it more cost efficient rather than trying to split battery packs up, etc., which all just gets a little bit complicated. Um, so batteries in there, the control box is on top. So that's what this lid is basically watertight, sealing it away from anyone wanting to touch it and play with, play with our electronics, which obviously you can't do. Um, but that's all sitting in there. But before I take you in there, let me just quickly show you around the other little things. Um, we've got a original rad ca casing here, um, which we've put a very small like motorbike type radiator in. There's a header tank for that. Um, and that's pushing water around the entire battery pack um, just to keep things at equilibrium but also into the inverter which is through these two. We've got a power steering pump which powers the original steering box and um, so actually not very difficult we just plumb it in and wire it up so you still have great power steering actually probably better than it used to be. Um, on the side of the box here you've got a high voltage disconnect so that basically isolates the whole um, battery pack, if you're ever working on the car or if it was in an accident or whatever, you can be safe by taking that out because um, basically everything will stop. And then other than that, in here we've got the original brake system, uh, which is there, but we have to power the servo with a vacuum pump, which is what this little circuit is here. Um, finally, we've got a heater element, which goes in the original heater box, which is this thing. Um, it's basically a little hairdryer element like that that runs off high voltage that when you put the fan on in the car it turns it all on and you get super hot air coming over the windscreen and out by your feet which is really nice um, because it means you actually get demisting in a Land Rover which is sort of unheard of. Um, so that's everything here. I'm going to take the camera and take you underneath um, to, so you can see the motor. So that's the Hyper 9 there. Um, very nice little motor there, sits onto the original gearbox under there somewhere. Um, so not the, not the fancy 300 horsepower that we usually play with, but um, perfect for a sort of less fancy car, more utilitarian car like this one. So now I'm going to get these bolts out and I'll show you underneath. So now I've taken the bolts out of the top box um, and opened it up so we can see what's going on inside. Nobody actually needs to go in there apart from me and my team. Um, so it's sort of a sealed for life unit, but I'll show you what we've actually done in the, on the inside because that's otherwise it's just a big black box in an engine bay. Um, so what we've got here is DC coming out of the batteries which are underneath the, in the box there. Um, they're coming up to the contactor circuit which is basically the ignition system. So when you turn the key, it allows current to go into the inverter here. Um, there's a fuse there, there's a pre-charge circuit there, a bit of complex wiring, but ultimately all it's doing is sending power into the inverter. Now the inverter is what powers the motor underneath, so it's connected to things like the throttle pedal, so that um, you know, it, it knows to send the motor forwards or reverse. Um, but basically all this cabling is doing that, and the three going down are going straight underneath to the motor there. Um, in here you've also got 
well, water cooling, you can see water coming in and out of the box. That's just to keep the inverter cool because it's running at 144 volts nominal uh, at 500, 600, 700 amps, depending how hard you're driving it. So we've got to keep it cool. We've got a couple of 12 volt things like ignition, charge power and constant power. They're powering little, you know, various circuits in the car. Um, and we've got the DC-DC, which is what converts 144 volts into 12 volts, which charges up your main battery, well, your 12 volt battery to run your wipers, your headlights, things like that. And then you've got the BMS, which is the most important thing of the whole build. Very expensive box with lots of very expensive wiring going um, amongst it. And that is what's keeping control of temperature, amp draw voltages, making sure the car is safe at all times when it's charging and when it's discharging. So that's the inside of the box. You can see it's all got plugs all over it. So um, you can literally disconnect the whole thing and pull the whole battery box out if need be. Um, and it just makes it easier when we start supplying these in kits, which we will be uh, very soon, that you can literally have all of this wiring already done. And then you just plug in the three plugs that will be pre-made off. So that's the inside of the box. So now you've seen inside, um, we've closed the back up again and this car is off to Kent um, where it will spend time moving horse boxes, I think, around and playing around on the farm or on the estate or whatever it may be. Um, she's been great to work on. It's fun because it's a little bit tatty. The, the lack appeal is coming off a little bit. You know, it's still filthy from being in a barn for a couple of years before, while it was sort of not on the road. Um, but we've rescued it. She's driving again now. Brand new MOT. It's actually been a fantastic car to convert. We really enjoyed it. But crucially, it's a really nice low cost entry point into this market of converting. You don't have to spend the 65 grand that we charge for a five, 450 horsepower crazy thing. This is much more um, sort of low, lower cost and a little bit more conservative at 35 grand, including VAT. We can do it as a kit, so we can package it up, send it across the world to you, um, and it's very easy to install. I think you could probably install it in a day or two. Um, so that's the Defender. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends, check out our Instagram, um, and see you in the next video.